and normally Crepo is completely okay with that because he can pick Morgana into it and get the Black Shields. At this point, they would have to play Thresh into Braum, generally speaking, which can still work, but it's not as ideal, and that's why they ban Thresh. But now, if Curse decides to first pick Braum, what's Crepo gonna have left? And they don't even do that, so that's neat. They take down Lulu. I think Lulu was banned all yesterday. Gets through today because of the situation in that Braum factor. We could see Helios locking in the Rengar immediately with Braum. We'll have to see if we get Orianna coming in for Pole Balter here. They try to take it away on Curse. Yeah, just based on these picks and bans, even though Curse is still a pretty big favorite in this game, based on recent results, right? Uh, the trading of Lulu for a Braum Rengar, particularly when there is Morgana and Thresh already on the ban list, Braum is a spectacular support against Nami, who is generally the support people go to right. next because the shield just blocks that entire tidal wave, infuriating Nami players everywhere. But <laughs> it's just a really good choice right here, and I'm surprised Curse uh, let it go through just to take Lulu. Seems like they might just have to pick up the Nami now. See what they decide to put in. They could try to go back to something like Sona and just play a sustain game. Sona has been somewhat working. Easy to keep yeah. the heal up. Sustain always comes into play very nicely, as you were talking about. But looks like it's going to be the Nami Cog. A little bit of safety for him, but not everything you would want. Jack Cobb had a pretty good Cogma game yesterday. Yeah, his living artilleries are on point. Definitely coming up with the clutch shots. Very interesting. The Mundo yeah. coming in as well. And Late we do game. see the Tristana, so we may. Get a few more picks for the late game. If they do get isolated in lane, Mundo is a very strong pick against a Lulu in the top lane, just because he has so much natural health regeneration. And since Lulu is a low damage top laner to begin with, it is near impossible to cut through that Mundo ult. Could see a rise coming in for EG for more late game, but Curse is looking at that new new jungle. Been seeing a little bit more as we're seeing a bit of focus on the junglers now as they get hit in champion select bands. What has Dominate been practicing now? We usually see him drop back to a Pantheon or something of his very big wheelhouse comfort zone. Yeah, well, there's plenty of stuff alive. Elise is still available. Uh, Nunu has been picking up a lot of steam. They've been hovering on it for a while. And Curse is one of the teams that actually hovers their picks occasionally. Mm -hmm. A lot of the other teams do the double lock-in to right. give the other team less time to react. It's an interesting little game there. Some Let's say it works, the cop right some there. say it doesn't. Jeez. I like the Orianna pickup as well. They deny it from Helios and the ball movement. Getting a nice command shockwave in from Stealth. So it helps a little bit with a good pick. Whoa. And they actually go for the Syndra yeah. in this matchup. Poe Belter looking to dominate that middle lane a little bit. Syndra very lane dominant champion. But really, that entire cursed team composition is about protecting Cop's Kog'Ma putting a lot of faith into him. He's a defensive player to begin with. Oftentimes when you run, protect the AD carry compositions. Uh, it's around an aggressive AD carry. You can take a lot of risks. Otherwise, sometimes you run into the unfortunate events of just not having damage to create fights. But Void Boy Zoriana has been solid enough and doing enough damage that should be okay for Curse. It'll be interesting to see the gameplay from Dominate. He likes to be quite aggressive. We saw him yesterday on Rengar really focusing the bottom lane, knowing yeah. he could get in and get through with a kill quickly. So we'll keep an eye on where he moves throughout the beginning. The teams are loading onto the rift, so let's see who you think will take the win at this point. According to LOLesports.com, 74% in favor of Curse right now over Evil Geniuses as we head into your second day of Week 8. Yeah, it's that big Evil Geniuses slump. Keep those votes coming over on Twitter. Send either hashtag CRSWin or hashtag EGWin to the at LOL Esports account, and we will be checking back throughout the game to see who's got the momentum on their side. And EG has had a very troublesome past week. Just their matchups in general have been all the top tier teams. The only one in the past six was Complexity. Yep. It's all Cloud9, Dig, TSM, LMQ, Cloud9. Yeah, Her. well that's the tricky thing. Uh, just about the North American schedule this year, who do they pick up wins against, right? right? Uh, you have so many teams at the top, meaning you kind of have so many teams in the middle, but just the way standings work, if you have a lot of teams high in the standings, yeah. someone's got to be way in the bottom to make that happen. Otherwise, everyone would just be sitting in the middle. Like, you'd like to think that everyone's strong, and maybe everyone is strong. Maybe EG is actually a strong team, yeah. but they're just not as good as the other teams in the league, right. which is why they're sitting at such a lowly record with only 
four wins off. And it's working so differently because some of the other lower teams are actually able to beat the top tier teams. So that decreases EG's chances even more when their opponents they should be having close games against are already three or four games ahead. We'll see if they can make up some ground here. Still have a good oh, four more weeks left coming into the split to make something happen. So now on day two, they face off against Curse, who, like we said, looking themselves to come out very strong off an 80-minute loss yesterday. Probably not thinking about it too much anymore, but they are thinking of how to prevent that in these situations. One for one. Cop always does this. Pretty much the start of every game. He's going to run mid and practice dodge. He's usually the first one to fire a Peacemaker when he's on Caitlyn here. He always tries to land something. 0 for 1 as far as dodges today, though. Yeah. Advantage evil geniuses. Double advantage. Good early sweep there. Yeah. The sweep. Known ward coming out. Slow movement for both teams. Just getting the regulars down for a standard start. This worked out for Dominate very favorably last time. We'll see if Helios tries to get in his face. Rengar Nunu matchup is that, wow, 50%. Really, really getting quick votes in there. What are we seeing kind of from a Helios uh, Rengar versus a Nunu? Is that something you can kind of counter jungle at all? The strange thing about this is, yes, early game counter jungling will have a bit of an impact, but as long as they're not counter jungling the second rotation of buffs, mm. the catch up experience from the blue and the red would be enough. So what Dominate wants to focus on more so than counter jungling is just good vision control and good ganks. All the objectives in the favor of Curse. They let a lot of the dragons go to the wayside yesterday for complexity in the early game. We'll see if they change focus on that. Curse was being very risk averse, as we've been saying lately about teams that think they can prevent a disaster by just giving away a little bit and then taking it back later. Yeah, and they've had success, you know, in their three and one super week against the top teams in the league. Curse, mm. by and large, didn't play super aggressively. They just played measured and since they lose yeah. games by making mistakes, they just decided to play even more cautious. It actually worked <laughs> out for them. Still winning fights from being down in gold. Just making things work. Definitely with the help of Dominate in the jungle. And this bottom lane, Cop and Expecial, coming out pretty big for Super Week. Expecial had a heck of a amount of games for himself. We'll see what he can perform on Nami this game with Braum going to Krepo. Yeah, that'll be a very interesting lane. Two hyper carry AD carries right there. All tech, though. Looks to take over games Ooh. much more than Cop does. Cop will do well in games, but he will never do, like for instance, we saw Vasily's Tristana yesterday in our oh final match word. of the day. 10-0, <laughs> he just took over that game. It's something we've seen Alltech do on Twitch, yeah. and it's something Tristana is very capable of doing. So if EG could get a lead in that lane down bottom, it could very well break them out of their slump. What a fast level two from Evil Geniuses. You saw put Curse on their heels for just a quick second. Cop and Expecial now getting back into the right zone here. Helios passing through mid. Just giving a good walk in, making sure Pobalter doesn't find anything too scary. Now at the three and a half minute mark. Not going to see any jungler pressure just yet. Yeah, a little weird that Helios would take that move. He was sitting at four ferocity. You see a lot of level three Rengar ganks with a max ferocity bola to try and get the root on people in lane. Mm. Especially since Poe Belter can land a good range stun on Syndra. That's kind of the gank they would be looking for and what Voiboy has to respect. But look how far back Voiboy is staying. Those ganks aren't really going to be possible. Yeah, he's not looking to do anything weird. One, two, three across Q, W, and E. Putting the shield on and getting dissonance. It's actually a lot a harder to keep doing that for him. A waste man real quick. We'll see how that lane plays out. See Alltech creeping up to place a ward. More coverage from the bottom lane for them so they can stay a bit more aggressive. And Helios just trotting along. Teleport back to the top lane for Inox. Pretty even going throughout all the lanes. Not too shabby. Is mm -hmm. he gonna sweep it? Just oh! oh. <laughs> wah, wah. The warding mind game. It's <laughs> good damage on the Void Boy. They've got Ignite in mid lane. Voidboy's actually running the heal, expecting to get burst out by this Helios Pobalter composition. Smart move. We saw it keep in, I believe, Prolly safe yesterday on Ziggs. He ran the heal as well. Yeah, if you're going to run the Protect the X composition with a lot of shields, mm -hmm. shields and heals work pretty well with each other. <laughs> All the safety. Nice brush control by Crepo. They are warded out, so you can see Cop staying safe. 
A good back and forth. Expecial making sure he can get his hits on to get some gold, gold built up on his generation item. We'll see if they can actually keep themselves strong. Quilco very early for dominating. He goes back in five minutes. Early ward, he'll be able to grab with that. Mm -hmm. Whereas Helios doing the Madrid's Razor. That's what every Rengar has been doing these days. He's on the hunt now. I'm surprised. He's probably itching after he didn't get that gank in mid when he came in. He's like, man, I'm usually aggressive at one minute in the game. Now it's five and a half. Let's see if we can get First a good gank, gank here. Though, they're trying to get aggressive. He's going to walk Helios right needs to make it over there quickly. Into Helios. This could be perfect. He kind of alerts they're them too a low little to too fight early. Him. Yeah. Walked into that. They're going to have brush control here, but Poe Belter, he's already wasted his flash to get directly away oh, from man. the team. They may not be able to get dominate, but he's able to jump on. Crepo and Helios know they need to retreat from this with a sustain of Expecial. Boy Boy's low on mana, but they're kind of saving face on this one, one for one. Crepo with the jump through the Dragon Pit really saved EG's skin overall there. Being able to trade the kill back. Mm -hmm. uh, kill ends up going to both junglers with assists on either side that will in the end benefit Boy Boy because he gets the minion wave experience. And you can see Pub out there kind of scratching his head there. A little fancy feet. You're still going to take some Bio Arcane Barrage. See if Pobelt can get back into it. Not too much CS was lost being exited in that lane. Looks like we're going to have Kwas trying to formulate something up top. He's being very risky. They got the wards for this, but they're not really getting too much out of it. Yeah, they were hoping to catch Helios, knowing he was had that kill as well. Don't want to let him snowball early. They want to be able to get eyes on Helios before he gets level 6 so they can predict where that deadly gank comes from. Talked a little bit about that yesterday, actually, when we saw it was Dominate on it, being in the face of that Rengar. Dominate had some the six. great Rengar ganks at level 6. He did the cooldown reduction Rengar mm -hmm. build as well, got on a lot of ganks, got Curse out to a great early lead, but they just weren't able to make right. plays after the fact. So he swept the ward, but he still gave his vision away, or his position away. There's really not much he can do, which is why it was a good ward by Quas, regardless of if it gets swept or not. Get what they need. It actually buys quite a bit of time for the knowledge of bottom lane, or at least Helios now, to make the moves. Now a forward ward placed again, so as Helios comes back around, Dominate's going to know they're on the bottom side of the jungle. It's boy, the boy. Game. It's all about keeping vision control. Thought they were going to help bottom lane, but it's just a pink ward. Curse now wants to start making sure that Helios does not enter anymore. Huh. What a nice Orianna. Yeah, helping him out with red. <laughs> the easiest jungle buff taker. I'll help you out. Helios doing a very good job of, well, trying to keep Nunu's vision control at bay. But this gank is a little bit straightforward. It's a very simplistic gank path. Clearing the ward and then trying to run straight to it. He missed his bola. Oh, it's still going to be Pobalt. are coming down quite quick. They get the stun on. Goes for the command shockwave. Very back and forth right now. A lot of communication coming down for the teleport. Voivoy gets hit and Helios throws the ulti on for a possibility of an execute kill there. Does not get it. And Curse collapses onto this. They may even try to go for Dragon if they have the time. Everyone ends up using their teleports right there. A little bit strange yeah, of a fight. Too much of a party Jungler's on the collision course. Pull out there without the damage to actually kill, I will dominate. Nunu's a pretty tanky dude. Especially when he's got all those extra little buffs he picks up from the jungle. That's true. Something to forget about quite a bit. He's got some of the highest base health in the game when you keep in mind his base health plus the health bonus he gets when he eats some of those tasty jungle creeps. Still one-to-one, -one, both teams itching to draw more blood as we see them. A lot of focus just under the mid lane is where the vision control has kind of been the fight for it. Definitely trying to control the blue buff area of Pole Belter, but not really getting a chance to hit it. We've only seen Helios in the jungle on the bottom side, really affecting where the red would be for a curse. Not too many moves made that were acted on just yet. Still going to see what happens at this first dragon. Wait for Helios to get six, though. He does have it. Only had to use it in defense last time. Oh. Crepo, pretty brazen. Look at the CS in this lane, actually. Altec and Crepo really starting to put the pain on. They're going with the static shiv Trist. So they're going to yeah. look to keep Kog'Maw shoved in.
for quite some time, which would make them a little bit at risk to a Nunu gank in the back. Krepo continually jumping in. Oh, man. Not too much damage, though. Good old Braum. Sightstone out for Krepo, but Sightstone also out for Dominate. We'll see if this kind of triggers them to start gaining more map control and put this composition kind of into play. Yeah, Sightstone and he still has an extra ward. Yeah. He's got wards for days. You can only have three on the map at once. <laughs> But he's got them just in case. This is where teamwork comes into play. You can see they already have a nice horseshoe right around mid, kind of capped on both sides with pink wards. Good point. Gives Boy Boy as much possible safety yeah. as he could get. They have that because uh, even though Rengar can stealth gank, unless he's going straight up the mid lane, they're going to see it coming. They want to actually have wards in places where they can see the start of Helios' stealth. Uh, and the fact that they've been able to accomplish so many deep wards is quite impressive. So Helios would kind of just have to guess, go straight up a lane in order to get a gank off. Krepo goes really aggressive here. Very, very hard. They do get the concussive blows locked down. Nice job by Expecial. Very low mana on Krepo. Don't know if he can hit out another Winter's Bite, and they choose to turn on this one. So Summoners use just Krepo's right there, and the flash from Cop. So they can still return fire pretty well here. If they get in range, the bubble hits. Dominate's going to lock it down. He will not take the turret damage. So Cop has to back off, but they're still going to get out. Oh, the stun from Not wrong. clean at all, actually. The heal comes out there. Altex still wants to go hard. They have Pole Belter on the top side. You also they're have Helios coming. coming on the back. That's going to be Expecial going down. The ball of Max Rage. He almost hits another one. That's the kill on to Cop. What an EG turnaround. They're going to come away with this and Dragon. The overdive there by Curse. They thought they punished Krepo for going over aggressive, but it ends up punishing themselves. And wow. now EG can get the dragon out of this too. An early game lead could be amazing in this one. So this move in itself was not good by Krepo. He was low on mana and he right. flashed in while really not having an advantage here. Curse can disengage this properly. Uh, and then X Special decides to turn on the counterattack because, hey, Dominate's on the way. Why not? He lands a great bubble onto the turret. But the big thing here is turrets on this patch do have increased damage, so Dominate gets pretty low. And in his dying breath, he lands a Q yeah, onto I will Dominate. Huge. And then Altec was able to get the stun proc'd afterwards. And then this is just Chase right here. Helios tries his damnedest to stealth in, jumps onto a minion just so he can land it. Misses the second one, actually, which could have been a kill. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was more than enough. Two kills onto Altec's Tristana and the Dragon. Great thinking, fast play by Altec to flash into the brush, keep vision on the whole fight. Everybody comes out nice and rich on that one. About a thousand gold lead in the favor of Evil Geniuses now. Dragon goes in their favor as well, so we'll see that coming back up around just before 19 minutes. And EG has the idea. So all these wards paying off for Curse in the mid lane. Actually, all the action going on in the bottom lane. So we'll have to see if they try to shut down Altec now, because the Trist is going to get going early. It's a pretty scary thing. And it's interesting how Curse is the one with the Protect the Kog'Maw composition. So if Kog'Maw doesn't get farmed, no. it's really, really bad. Because that's the thing they are supposed to be protecting, which puts more emphasis on EG's bottom lane success, or even Curse's success for that matter. Hence all the roaming. EG's red was stolen away, so they want to steal Curse's. Who got it? Oh my god, he got smited it! the way. No, 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 he got smited <laughs> he got away. He got smited and he blasted too to make sure he had every bit of damage he could just at the end. Very nice job. Again, causing Helios' ultimate to go off in defense. It's short cooldown. He'll be able to use it again, no problem. He's going for damage Rengar too. Yeah. None of this tank Rengar. Brutalizer. Helios wants to kill people. They got tankiness with Inox in their mind. We haven't actually even seen Inox come into play yet. 125 to 117 in that top lane. Not doing too bad for those guys. We haven't really paid him a visit, and we don't have to. It's the top lane. At this point, Inox doing all right, though, against Quas here. We said Mundo was a pretty big matchup against Lulu, and the reason is yeah. Lulu just cannot kill Mundo. <laughs> it's just not possible. Uh, a lot of what Lulu can do is slowly harass out some of the other tanky top laners, which is why she's such a great pickup there, as well as adding some teamfight utility. But just not Mundo. You just can't move him. So... Not an overwhelming lane for Pobelter here, 144 to 146. Down in CS, he's got an assist from a bit of the roam, but has not taken out Boy Boy probably as much as he wanted to. Very safe play from the heel. Kills out that kill pressure a little bit. And Boy Boy, we saw him playing so far back, and still is. Yeah, he has to respect the Rengar. It's one of those things. They 
should actually have the timer on his ultimate from the lane gank bottom lane, right. at least in a general sense, so he should know that a little bit, but that only comes with a lot of playing against Rengar, and he's, you know, he's been banned so long in North American LCS, these guys haven't had the time against him. It'll come. Not the guy you want to forget that's in the game when you're that trying too. to start a fight. Yeah. <laughs> it happens so many times. You get a kill in the mid lane, you're like, all right, and then all of a sudden... Just jumps out of nowhere, you Rengar. eats your face. You that's know. a great ward. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Just one of those, oh man, situations. Paul Belch is going to be seen out by this. And they know he's taking a long way home. What a fast push. We get it. He's trying to actually just take it down. What do they want to get Rome on this, maybe? He can get it. He's definitely going to get it. Yeah. Throws on the ult. Says, I'm going to take what down you top do for it. So now Quas can... Possibly put pressure somewhere else on the map here. We'll see what they decide to do with this. Inox is going to be staying in that top lane. We'll probably get a bit more farm in there. A minute and 50 on Dragon will be the use of those teleports. We see finally the Golem Spirit built up for Dominate. And the Riggles finished up there for Helios finally in his jungle. Start stacking it. Interesting, actually. A lot of junglers don't upgrade into Riggles until they're fully stacked on their Feral Flare. He's at 23 stacks. Mm. He needs 30 to transform that guy but he will get the ward, and Vision is at a pretty big premium this game. Put the Dragon up in one minute and 20 seconds. That should be the next battlefield. It looks like EG is definitely putting a little priority on Rome, especially for Crepo. Swifty boots for him coming out on Braum. Huh. A little different in the bottom lane. Trying to run through the Glitterland slows of Lulu. Yeah. Swifty boots not the most common choice. I do like them in general, though. They're, I think they're a somewhat under-purchased boot. Especially when he's got his shield on it. will give him a lot of in-fight mobility. Oh, man. Yeah, your extra speed there. As far as in-combat speed, the boots of swiftness is as fast as you can get. It's a good-looking boot. Oh. I'd wear it. White does get dirty pretty easily, though. That's true. Gotta watch out for that. You just clean it in the river. Yeah. Good point. Grabbing this vision control. That'll help a little bit. They set more up. 30 seconds on the dragon. Looks like the needlessly large rod pickup for both mid laners to have a nice little impact here. They also are both level 12. Yeah, the lanes as far as mid and top have been very even as far as trading farm. Yeah. The action has been in the bottom lane because generally that's what the team comps are built around. If Kog'Maw doesn't succeed, Curse will not succeed. So that is really where all the action has been drawn to this game. Well, that lead is still there for Alltech at 130 CS to his 166. He's got the highest lead in the game for a or for a deficit against his lane, I should say. But with a Trinity Force, Cop has the potential for more success in this fight as Alltech. It will depend on how yeah. well he can position himself for this damage, because there's a lot of threat coming here. A full ferocity to Rengar. But at this point, pulling the dragon would put them in a disadvantage. He kind of wants Inox to be able to walk down, but he could teleport if he needs to. It's become there he goes, a trying to the quite difficult engagement for Curse now. Yeah. They don't really have anything but a walk-in, especially when he wants to, to just rush ultimate. this dragon down. They're really forcing Curse into coming in or get a hard initiation. Pull Belter would have to land a stun at this point. ED taking a lot Shields of poke down, damage. Double bubble gets kicked away. Oh, dominate. He knobs on the dragon. The ultimate goes on to him coming in from Poe Belter. That's a lot of damage to be used on a big tank, leaving the rest of the damage dealers on Curse quite healthy after they take the dragon. They have lost one. Oh, my gosh. Ha <laughs> ha. Pull. Shoot. Takes him down. I don't know about that call from EG going for that dragon in that sense. Grouping up at a dragon against an Orianna is really tricky. Especially when Dominate can get into a smite, consume more with yeah. your jungler and most likely steal it. Lucky to only have a one for one there, but they did lose the dragon. And in a sense, they give up some of their advantage. There was, it was a fight that definitely put EG into a tight corner of what do we do? Because how what did they use? They used on Pole Belter, or I'm sorry, on Dominate, they used Pole Belter's all. Ult. Alltech tried to buster shot him away, yeah. and he still stole it. And then you, you have no ults to fight with. Very interesting bit of chaos there. I mean, we got to take another look at this one. It's just a 5v5 Dragon Force without solid initiation is just yeah. kind of asking for trouble, you know? They get Bubble onto two. 
They do Buster Shot him, but he gets it with a smite, not even the consume. Yeah. But then when the fight actually begins... And he gets his ult. What is up with the positioning? How do yeah. they do this? Well, only by the grace of God, all the damage got dumped into Inox with a bunch of other Wee. viable targets. Uh, Curse doesn't end up cleaning up this fight, so... Almost jumped back to try to dodge the ball. So close. If there is a benefit to take out of that from EG, is that the one kill they did get went back on alt tech, and he did complete his Infinity Edge. That is a big twist, and that is a huge two-item spike, especially for 20 minutes. Let's see if he can get himself right as rain. Check where he's at. Level three on his rapid fire, so he actually got more gold than he had to time that level up to level five on his Q. It's about a thousand gold ahead as well. So that's what they're looking to save. If Helios can make the right plays and they can get to the right positions, all tech to jump in and jump out is really the plan here. But both teams kind of have a lack of initiation. It's all just walk up to a line and see who makes the first mistake. Oh, come on. They're going back for it. <laughs> Lots of pings. So Curse trying to regain their jungle back now. Let's see if they can do it. Bottom lane already being affected here. Very interesting. So some map pressure being continually applied here by EG. Boy Boy's going to have to get a lot of ability power to make himself into a viable threat here. The Lulu Orianna and Nunu is very supportive or utility-based combo. It can pump out some good damage, but it needs Man. a lot of ability power. <laughs> I'm just looking at what Helios is finally coming out with now. Ghost Blade. Yeah. And he's finished the Flare. I'm sure Boy Boy is pretty scared. He'd love to turn that into a Rabadon's, and he does. I was going to say he's going to turn it into a Zanya's, but now he needs to make these plays count. He needs the damage. He does, yeah. Helios as well. It's a very aggressive build here. You see most Rengars go tank because when they jump in, they need to be able to survive a little bit, and they're about the initiation power and the catching power. If Curse just groups up, the damage Rengar build won't actually be that good because they can very easily turn and kill him. The Ghost Blade Ferro Flare build is when you catch people split pushing. So Helios will need to seek out and destroy stragglers in here. It really just shows that EG is probably going to be going for a split push type strategy for a while now and trying to catch Curse running back and forth. Well, they definitely have the wards for you here on this bottom side of the jungle. Continuously back and forth, dominating Krepo going on this ward game. Altac moves up. They should have enough to take down this turret. Actually, with the wards, they see that they are in a bad position. This is going to allow them to stay safe. Teleport is up, actually, for Quas here, but that would leave top turret in a very bad position with Inox taking it down. So it's hopefully a 4v4. Kite, not fight, coming in for Curse. Yeah, it feels like EG is a little bit afraid of this 4v4. I think it would be a pretty close fight, but it's all about whether Helios could get a good initiation. If he gets caught, it is very, very bad. No catches, though, with the teleport burn. And now Inox is all alone. Special's got to land something good here. Yeah. He's going to oh, be able to man. get that top turret. Tidal wave. Inox is teleport the is block. actually up. Inox is going to teleport in the back side of the fight. He's going to be right in the middle of the fray. He comes in. Boy Boy is going to be the first to be taken down. They did not expect to see a Mundo coming in. Krepo has taken a lot of damage again. And somehow, Curse has microed themselves in and out here. Inox to be the last one down. They completely save face on this. A Cassian surprise is going to help drop Inox in this fight. And it goes over to Quas. What a turnaround with Inox coming in late on the fight. Yeah, Altec bailed on that fight pretty early on, actually. A good initiation there by Curse at the end of the day because they did head off where EG was heading. I mean, the late teleport in, they put on a ward for the sole purpose of teleporting, and EG says, let's get out of here. At this point, it was about a special one to land a tidal wave versus Krepa wanting to block it. Pobother flashed a little bit backwards, which kind of screwed EG over here. Shockwave does catch Krepo. Tidal Wave zones out a little bit, but mainly just watch the development of this fight. Inox is so strong that they can't kill him. If Alltech would have played a little bit more carefully along the outside of this fight, they may have been able to clean some stuff out because he bailed. What? And then Inox takes another 20 seconds to die. Nunu had so, no mana. There wasn't a huge amount of threat. It would have been Quas's Glitter Lances and whether Alltech could dodge them that would decide that fight. 
But if game continues, it's even in gold, and EG wants this dragon again. It's going to be about securing it. Not seeing him jump away kind of confused me of how that fight quickly just went back the other way, but it is as it is. And we see Dragon now going over to Evil Geniuses. They gain control even more on the map. Now with 1,000.2 gold lead in their favor. Old Good. sound. Cleaned up. Yeah. So Kogma has a recurring <laughs> death sound. <laughs> We're going to move the camera so we don't hear that real quick. So seeing uh, the <laughs> turret almost go down, lots of parties from Kogma. Probably see him die one more. I don't want to hear it back again. up. Cutlass being built up by him. Once he gets that, he's actually not going for the Infinity Edge right away. So he wants to go for just the attack speed, tear through the HP of Inox, who's already going to give him the help on that when he builds his health up. A very interesting yeah. game for This game is really fascinating right now. Inox proved how strong he was in that last fight. There is only one Ignite on the entire Curse team to try and deal with Inox. And even when Kog'Maw gets a little bit fed, he will be doing a large proportion right. of magic damage. Now, Inox is already sitting at 174 magic resist. Very, very, very difficult person to calm down. He needs those kind of initiations, though. That was perfect for yeah. Evil Geniuses if they were able to keep staying in the fight. Yeah, Pobelter really got messed up badly in that one. If, if Pobelter can help take out or even get a good amount of damage on a cop, Inox would run wild in those fights, just knowing how well I'll take his powering up. But he still needs more time on Trist. He needs, he needs another big item. Yeah, one more for him. It actually looks like he threw some. Maybe he's gonna get a blade of the rune. Uh oh, king. that squishy Rengar. If he gets caught around the side, it's bad news. Curse working the wards very well. It pays off for them. Little return on investment. Dominate continues to take the cleavers for the team. He can just walk off, consume some side camps get himself back up to health. Very good play by them, walking it in. They're gonna go ahead and take this turret quite easily. This curse takes a little bit of ground back for themselves here in the game. Almost evening the game up, just within 300, 400 gold. And if we talk about these close games, EG usually loses them. They are not right. sticking together very well. Helios gets caught out of position. They do not have ward control around the Baron pit. Curse is looking to exploit them a little bit. They cancel their recalls. They're going on this with the new new cog. They kill it really, really fast. All tech on the outside. They got the alt out. Dodges the bubble as well. well he the found aquatic it. What life is dog. quite easy for him. Special taking damage on the outside. It looks like they quickly force Curse off of that call. That's scrying orb by all tech. Yep. Oh, he well. bought that a long time ago. He loves to get that super early. And then just some slick dodging. Tidal wave, bubble, all without yeah, burning. Yeah, living summer. artillery. He knows what he's doing. All credit to Altec there. Well, he's got the alacrity, helping him out. A little speed on the boots. Move he's bottom lane, really wanting to move fast in this game. That's true. Swift Thinking of Krepos too. Early. I mean, it, it shows positioning is very important against a team as fast as Curse right now. Move speed boosts on all of their supportive characters. Yeah. Kog'Maw will be a very, very fast Void Puppy at the end of the day. Blood Boil. Quas can speed them up, Boy Boy speeds them up with Dissonance, and yeah. all of X Special spells will provide a boost speed boost as well. Gotta love getting free stats. Well, I guess it's not free. They're using their ability. It actually kind of... <laughs> that move speed advantage was seen best in the last fight that Curse won, where they teleported in without really being in engagement range, but then right. we're still able to chase them down. Holy macaroni. Dominate, needing the shield to get out of that one, but they get a lot blown off. Pole Belter's ultimate, it'll be up before and it dominates too. Flash, though. But yeah, that Ignite going down. And they were only within 900 health of killing him. Not ideal. EG's trying to make the moves. Here and there, they try a little bit. Maybe Curse can act off of this. But EG's early to mid game is usually pretty solid. It's towards that late game, like you were saying, where they start to falter, stretch themselves a little too far to try to get those type yeah. of kills. And now next fight, they might be without that Ignite No. This Tristana, though, we've seen a couple of complexity games where Tristana gets a little crazy. Uh, yeah. He's sitting on 2,300 or so gold right now. Ooh. 2,500. Scary that way time fast. to fight if they do. Definitely needs to go back and spend that gold. But they may not have a chance. Once again, pressured. Maybe put into a fight here they don't want to fight. With Curse building pretty much no armor, it would be an opportunity now for Alltech to go a 
Blade of the Rune King or a Bloodthirster instead of his Last Whisper and try and do larger amounts of damage on the carries. We'll have to see. He needs the time to shop even, and they lose a lot of map pressure when he goes away. He should know he can do that. Sometimes it's hard to predict as an AD carry when you're like, I'll get that item, and then this you is, see an armor come in on the other side. This is super tricky, though. Inox is down bottom. They do not have vision control at the Baron Pit. Look at those wards by Curse. So he is making sure he doesn't get seen recalling, because if Curse knows he goes away, or even guesses he goes away, they could basically get Baron. And they go as soon as he goes away. Great guess. They're hoping for bait. Party time. Yeah, it's not going to do much. Whew. Big shot coming out of cop. Just that was one bio arcane barrage activated. You can see Enox actually starts trailing up as well off of the map from Quas. He might be trying to get a teleport in here if something comes in. Bloodthirster as well for all tech. Farm that lane. Very nice. Seeing as the last situation in the fight for him, he wasn't really that affected. And once Nunu's hitting him, he can pretty much still take down Nunu. Yeah, there's almost no armor on Nival Dominant. Right. He should be able to shred through him. All right, so good pickup from Evil Geniuses here. Take a while. I don't know if he's going to get that one. At least they're keeping their mind in the game to keep the gold going. If it's not going to affect their hold in middle and they can keep this vision here without yep. having to stretch yep. thin for Baron vision, I mean, hey. But does he have to leave now? Because yeah. Curse is just playing really dangerous mind games. Or rather, EG is playing really dangerous mind games. Curse is so afraid to start the Baron, though. They're very afraid of getting collapsed on. It's causing them to take overly cautious measures here. They have the move speed. They could just rush into EG. But they have chosen not to here, and it cost them the Dragon. It's always this second tier turret. If it's up in mid and Baron's up, you're either being forced to go for Baron or they're driving down middle to take that second tier turret. Back and forth again, now back for the Baron. If Curse can really get a good move here, they're gonna have a minion wave reset in mid. They should maybe be able to push down mid. Very tense. EG's peeling off, but Curse is following too much. They're not gonna be able to go. It's actually going to be all tech that pushes that wave down middle. So EG now, Kind of have the ring around going. Tunnel vision from Curse to the top side, and there may be some good damage on the turret as Voidboy recalls himself to mid here. All tech. And stop it. He's got to run really fast. Okay, Quas takes the safe route back. So much safety here by Curse. If he yep. would have came through the river, then they could have gotten the kill, so. There you go. That was close. 33 on the clock. We'll see if Curse can continue to push down mid. This bottom slash top laners, 277 to 294, 301 and 112. We've seen a few plays come from these guys. And but the farm differential between the 80 carries is becoming immense. Oh, gosh. There's multiple times in this game where I want to say that, sure, that Curse should have gone with the more aggressive route. but they have gone with the passive route on every occasion. It's like every it kind of every lane, we were talking about every lane kind of did well for both sides as they came out because nobody really tried to do anything. It only happened when Helios or Dominate were involved in the mix and then only a few people died and the mass amount of kills have only come from Dragon Objectives. So these teams are definitely a little weary about even facing each other, which you know could result in an 80 minute game. And there's a really strange dance. <laughs> As far as what Curse is approaching this week, as far as mindsets go, yeah. they jumped into pole position of sixth place and making the playoffs amongst the three teams. And then they're just playing EG in complexity this week, and they had the opportunity to more, solidify right their spot, really, and maybe even start attacking some of the top teams. But if they go 0-2 here, it's going to be tricky. Their team comp is still quite good. This game could really go either way. But Quas is spending a lot of time in that top lane, and that Baron is not going to be up for much longer. They got vision on it. Living Artilleries are coming down. Curse needs to start pressuring a little bit more. Prepo. Prepo, way too far in front of the fight. Can the gap be closed? Get a good ultimate onto Pobalthor in the back line. He's not providing any assistance here. The Randuin goes off, but Boy Boy was a little too close. Quas takes a full ultimate coming in. Triple. And he's able to get himself out for Pobalthor. A good hit. He uses the wild growth, but there's way too much EG on the fight right now. The blocker kill coming in for all. 
was only a matter of time. Altec doesn't even look too happy about that one. He almost had his second pentakill in a single split of the LCS, but EG destroyed Curse right there. This time they peeled off and they realized how strong Altec was. Crap, what does game? <laughs> easy game, easy life at this point with Crepo because they're going to be getting this Baron real soon. But what a fight that was for EG. Altec is an absolute monster because no one on Curse has armor. That's one of the biggest things that cr uh, created success for them oh, in that fight. Insane. We're just talking about Curse needing this win. Yeah. Not looking good if that continues to happen. Altec, again, out of the laning phase, just becomes a titan instantly. Yeah, just looking at this fight, it looked like Krepo got over aggressive. Yeah. But remember, Quas wasn't here, and his teleport's only going to be so fast. Altec actually charged up Max Shield off the Baron, so he's hard to touch. And just watch how quickly he shreds through people. Dominate, a couple hits. Helios jumps in, no one can focus him oh. because everyone's running away from Altec. Two shots, boy boy. Oh. Three shots, cop. Oh, that if was it wasn't for a bubble from that <laughs> special, it would have been a clean he flashed it. Penta here. Dude, the whole team had the kills, but he flashed it. He was literally <laughs> a half second off of being able to get that Penta if the ball from Pole Belter didn't finish off. Lulu there. Good Lord. Oh, how he does it. Now so things consistent. are really bad. Better be buying that chain vest, I will dominate. They need a little bit more. Yeah, lock into the Iron Solari is not going to keep you safe right now. Double buffed, all deck, moving up the mid lane with the rest of his team. Looks like they are pretty dead set on taking this mid turret now that they have themselves a Baron. And only Crepo does not have that for his little mishap. May as well call all tech triple buff too, because he's got the Baron buff. Yeah. Uh, keeping in combat as well to make that Bloodthirster shield. Keep in mind, it is a 440 health shield if he keeps it maxed. So even though his health bar reads 2200, uh, he is sitting at around 2600 effective health there. There would have to be some serious mishaps for EG to throw this one away right now. Four and a half items, that's one and a half above what Cop is even presenting in his inventory right now. These guys should be able to walk right through this front fight. And Curse is giving the respect to the damage that EG can bring to the table. Cop. Needs three or four members just to put a dent in Inox there, and he can still ult up. Oh, lots of stuns. That's scary. You, just, you didn't have an ult tech in range. That's the only reason he got out alive. Yeah, a little bit of miscoordination there by EG, but they get the inhibitor without suffering a casualty. They're just going to try and move through yeah. the rest of these outer turrets while they realize how strong ult tech is. And this is the thing. If you're going to run a Protect the Kog'Maw composition, if your Kog'Maw doesn't succeed as you are on Curse, it's going to fall flat on his face here. Right. They got it. It works with Nunu. It works with the ball protection, with the added health of Lulu. But like you said, it doesn't come together. EG getting an early level two, pushing in Cop in the bottom lane. Almost 200 CS ahead right now, and that has always been a lead for Altec throughout the game. Very patient play for Evil Geniuses, knowing that the late game team would just come into play. Especially helps when Altex 8-0-1. Yeah. Oh, and Inox can tank these turret shots without care. Yeah. Mundo has about 270 health regen per five seconds with the Baron buff combined. But that was a couple nice shots there by Cobb. Chris might look to make a little this bit of aggression. This is where they need point. to hit it, Jat. They cannot afford to fall to here. EG starts, needs to start picking up wins. A lot better play coming from the players themselves. See Inox, like we were saying, taking up turrets, being a beast right now. He was loving carry champions. Always playing the jacks, always playing the nidalee in the top lane when he could. Switching it up to the utility is keeping himself a very good person to have on the team. A very able really champion. Really haven't touched that turret, though. Another minion wave falls shy. That's... They need to find a new plan here. You can't stick around that many waves and not make progress. Altec's not even in range to get this. They do take down a turret in the bottom lane, but they're still working to get into the base. The first one they just hit, they're able to walk right in. Are they really just going to need Baron to do it again? They got to find another way in. They could continue to farm up for a bit more gold. Their itemization could get there. I mean, they spent so long with that Baron buff looking at that turret. It's gone now, as you said. Yeah. Dragon is up, obviously. And they almost have nothing to farm. They've Everything's pushed. Yeah, true. Only this Kog'Maw will slowly be catching up to what Altec has become. 
Yeah, a little but breathing room. The gold difference between Alltech and Cop is a little bit monstrous right now. 18,000 to 12,700 as far as AD carry farm is concerned. That's what it looks like when you put a team on your back. <laughs> With the assistance but of hey, your team, of course. Once Cop gets an Infinity Edge with Blood Boil and with the Lulu picks on top of him, his damage potential will be just yeah. as good, if not greater, than what Alltech can put out. He's still looking to hit his spike. That's kind of the yeah. scary thing. We haven't really seen it just yet. And the Mikhail's Crucible we saw keep and dominate safe in the last catch, which could have meant the end of the game. It just previously at that middle inhibitor turret, so that's coming into play very big. The Mercurial Scimitar finished up. Nicely for all tech. So rich, he can keep himself safe. And look at Inox, more mocks as well on top of his Randuins and Banshees. These guys are able to put just excessive items under their belts now as they move into the base. 12,000 gold in the lead. EG is looking very dominant, but again, scary when they get to the base. Why? Can they not get through the front? Another minute and 15 on Baron. It might be the way they need to get back through the front door. Of course. Yeah, they're going to pick their moments. I really think it has to do with that next Baron. For now, they're just yeah. farming with Alltech, making sure he's wearing buffs, he's got a red. They could take another Siege at this middle inhibitor as it's respawned, but without the Baron, it's a little higher risk. Ooh. And that's even without the Eye Edge. That's the help picks, the Nami slow on top of it as well. There's a lot of things that make this Kog'Maw even more scary, despite not having success this game. Curse. Slight good push on the side lane so they can keep all five members mid here, but they are going to be pressured. Ward coverage is being gained by Crepo. EG kind of prioritizing where they need to be, what they need to foreshadow for themselves. And with that pink ward just chilling up at Baron, Curse is going to know when they need to make a move. They're going to be seen pretty much the whole way up by these security wards. They have a chance. Yeah, yeah Baron would fall really fast. I think Curse just gives it up. Yeah. They're being smart about this. They probably couldn't even run there if they wanted to at this point. I bet you can run there. <laughs> they get there. It would be very late. They get there <laughs> after the fact. So EG's taking down Baron. Easy peasy for them. Second one of the game. Four out of five dragons. Again, another game where Curse does not prioritize the objectives in the game, getting themselves into that position or just... Didn't have the chance at the time, but EG has gained a very big gold lead due to objectives. That lane of all tech in the bottom and just completely controlling the map. Yeah, so in general, what they do, all tech just sold the static ship for Phantom Dancer, more end game DPS from that item. Right. Uh, and also bought elixirs. Everyone on EG wants to spend as much of their gold as absolutely possible right now. Buyout. Because the next push should be the final one. So they should be getting elixirs across the board if they haven't. You can see a blue elixir is on Poe Belter. A blue and a red elixir is on Alltech. So they're really just trying to power up for this final push. Hopefully it can What be. should be the final push. What should be. 14,000 gold lead. They could just be staring at each other again once they make it to the front of the base. This inhibitor waiting to go down once again. And knowing that damage the cop just did, we'll see how hesitant Crepo or Helios is to really get themselves into this fight. Thousand damage, 1,064 out of crit. two shots coming from crits on all tech. You do not want to be hit by that. Banshee's Veil is being popped on one side. So EG can get past the inhibitors. That's quite nice, but can they hit a uh, turret first? They just used Helios' ultimate. It's not ideal. Could have used that for an initiation under the turret. But look at how fast it's going yeah, down. Yeah, rapid fire's on. To go Very in. easy. Crepo taking a lot of turret shots, but they get it to go down. And I don't think it's going to be a re-engage here. Whoa! hey yo! Zanyas plays all week long. Be sure to tip your waitress. Oh, what a shockwave! Paul Belt out of the living artillery! Another one from Cop, possibly on the backside. He's looking at that final range of his living artillery, so they're trying to get all the deeps in that they can to end this one. The Void Ooze to slow it. He gets taken down again in midair as he goes for a leap. And they may not continue to chase this. They got to get things pushed. They got to regroup. Riv, we talked before the game about Paul Belt being a wild card. <sighs> that was pretty wild, if you ask me. That was not what he wanted to do. He wanted to flash in alt and then Zanyas. You don't his order say. of operations all mixed up there. <laughs> it ends up 
not really working out for EG. So they did get the turret down, and then they were hoping for the game-ending fight here. If you're gonna flash in, he was looking to catch Boy Boy. He stunned Boy Boy, and he's like, all right, I can flash all. It has happened to the best of us. Uh, but that time, he just gets Ooh. completely messed up afterwards. Alltech then doesn't have the front line standing in front of him, and they have to bail out. Cop untouched. Boy Boy's still there to shoot. Oh my speed. gosh. There's so much speed up in control once they're chasing you with whimsy and dissonance. The important thing is they <laughs> exposed the second inhibitor, though. That is true. But you can see how easily they took the middle inhibitor, so now they have another chance at it with Baron being down. You can hang out on the bottom side of the map all you want. 45 minutes in, EG making a few dents on the base, but Curse is still showing life in this game, and if a fight goes drastically wrong, it can easily sway the other way to EG's inhibitors being down. And something we have to point out as well, Riv, is that Infinity Edge that got completed by Cop. Even though he's not at full offensive items, he's got a zeal on the way Still. for even more attack speed coming in. He's getting pretty scary. He's getting to a point where Inox will not be able to withstand the barrage of Kog'Maw. Inox hasn't really built too much armor. You see him putting the chain vest in now. He went for HP before. The thing about Kog'Maw is there's not a, you can't yeah. really itemize <laughs> against him. Bioarcane Barrage is magic damage. It's doing right. a percentage of your Sending max health. Down. And his base autos are still pretty potent. You just gotta build everything in Thanks. synchrony. And <laughs> then you still die. Hope it's the right time and the right place. Good block out. Look at this poke though. EG's taken half health now to Crepo and already shots on the Altec. He can heal himself up. Crepo, yeah. not so much at this point. He's also running Distortion Boots to keep himself on those Swifties using his summoners ASAP. 47 minutes in, EG back on the front step here as they Pepper Curse's second inhibitor turret to go down. Did EG mess up their chance will be the question here. Cop has become very scary and EG looks a little skittish to make it in here. Alltech can still blow people up, but it's a matter of if he can stay safe in the process. There's a lot of stuff that can kill him as well. He gets too close, going with an incredibly offensive Tristana build. This movement speed along with the shields, even the movement speed itself, if they didn't have the shields, they're making it so hard to organize around where Cop can be. A few shots in. They can't even get themselves in for a few shots on the inhibitor. Alltech gets it on to dominate. And we're going to see them start to pressure. There goes there the go. tidal wave out. Inox is going to be hit up. He'll use his ultimate. Should be all right. A few more is not going to take him down. Crepo puts himself down with Unbreakable, as he says quickly. Stand behind me. Woo. That was a close call, one would say. Altec just barely... He's not even the one to finish it, actually. It was Inox who managed to end the inhibitor's life at the end of that. But you can see that they need to hurry things up a little bit. It's getting pretty stressful. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little tense for both teams. Somehow, looking at 48 minutes in, 526 for Altac, farming beast right there. But we're getting to that point where the gold doesn't matter. Sure, it's a 15 Yeah, he's gold. itemed out. He just sold his boots. Altec has been maxed for a while. He just bought his boots. <laughs> Side of the Kansan upgrade, <laughs> he resold them. Uh, a lot of AD carries at this point want to go with the Zephyr at the end of the game, but for Tristana, it's not necessarily beneficial because he would lose move speed overall, uh, going from Alacrity, mm -hmm. Berserker Greaves, uh, from a Zephyr. And he's also incredibly close to his max attack speed just because of how much attack speed Rapid Fire gives him. So he doesn't actually need the Zephyr. It's arguably a decrease in effectiveness in this particular instance. What would be an increase in damage is if he sold the boots for something like a Phantom Dancer and upped his crit chance even more so. Another. Another Phantom Dancer. I but like that's a, a long-term plan. What about a second Infinity Edge? Hey. I've heard some people do that. <laughs> really take him down. It would be a lot of damage at this point. He's Let's see. The tax would support it. Let's see what 50-minute mark brings us here. All tech. All tech. Troll portin'. Live Baron, no contest once again coming in from Curse on this one, as would it be expected. They held it off once before. Can they hold it off again? Obviously, now we have Cop a little bit stronger, so. This is the more difficult one. So EG's gonna have to cycle the middle inhibitor again. It's going to respawn shortly. Uh, then they're gonna have to hope for the big waves of super minions. I feel like we've been through this song and dance before a few times in the past days, but it's really difficult. If 
you can get two inhibitors down to hold that third turret because the power of the super minions is so great. It's going to be about EG trying to get this inhibitor down. This one is actually really important for Curse to defend. They're not putting up a very good defense right now. Bobo should just keep his ball out on the front line here. Really deter the entire team of a shockwave. So look at now they have to stand around it. They're not, I don't think they can defend this. It's really important that they do though. Giving up a little too much room. Shots coming in from the backside. Altac able to hit that with his long range now of level 18 Tristana. Outranging just about everybody on the map besides their skill shots. Top lane pushed in now as EG needs to end this stranglehold they have on to Curse, or Curse is going to lash out very soon. And this is the point in games which is very, very rarely come back from. Two inhibitors down while pushing the third. Unless Curse can win a team fight right now. That's going to be huge shots coming in from Cop. He's hesitating a little bit though. He's only hit a few, waiting for that return of Poe Belter, knowing the Zanyas is there. They're very See, afraid of the front line. Even when they it. fight for half a second, right. the minions take down their Nexus that turrets. That bit of tunneling there on the fight, in which they needed to do, cost them their Nexus turret. Oh. Very tight fight coming in here. Curse has to make the right decisions. They just had a minion wave spawn 10 seconds ago, so they have a bit of time to buy here. Zanyas goes out, and they cannot finish Poe Belter. Altec gets a few kills for himself. Oh, He's man. alive with full HP. The triple kill for Altec. He, the he so sees bad. the Penta in his eyes. Can he out you Cop? The no. sustain the is there. He Another shot. Cop doesn't have it. Yeah, he does. He gets the Bio Arcade Barrage last shot on. He's going to get the kill, but that's going to be the end of the game. The Nexus is going down in favor of Angel Geniuses. They stop the six-game bleeding streak, and they're able to pick up a win over Curse at 51 minutes. There's a sigh of relief yeah. from Pepo as well. And Rip, this makes things very interesting. Near the bottom of the NA North LCS standings right there. EG off the back of all techs, immense Tristana right here. Was able to pull out the win. A lot of relief to end the losing streak that long. And then a lot of sadness on the side of Curse. Coming into a week and then having this type of performance. Even with three white shirts, who would have thought? Yeah, a new one to come out today. The confidence of Curse has been growing by leaps and bounds. And shut down a little bit grow. there. After a 3 1 Super Week, they're brought to 0 2 on Week 8. Very difficult and long games that they have to go back and watch. But in all honesty, EG's as well. They do grab the lead, but they the closing out point is something that needs a little refining for them. Of course. They made some mechanical mistakes, which is much easier to remedy than strategic mistakes. They could have yes, ended that game much point. earlier if Poe Belter wouldn't have done the infamous Flash Zonya's play <laughs> at the bottom of the base. Uh, hey, other than that, they could have done it. Everybody tries to get the game